So the country is now bracing for yet another grand jury decision in a case involving a white police officer and a black victim who he was trying to take into custody. This happened in July. This is the cell phone video that captured a New York City policeman placing a 43-year-old Eric Garner into a chokehold during an arrest for selling loose cigarettes on the street. Garner eventually died. Uh, from those injuries. As you can see, there were a lot of witnesses to this entire event. The NYPD is bracing now in New York for potential protests. The nation is already on edge, of course, after a grand jury decided not to indict Ferguson. Police officer Darren Wilson in that case. I'm joined now by Janine Borelli. Is, she is the president of Conservative Review and a Fox News contributor. And Basil Smichael Jr. is the president and founder of the Basil Smichael Associates and contributor for The Hill. Welcome to both of Thank you. Good to have you here. Thank you. I, you know, they postponed the release of this grand jury decision here in New York until after the tree lighting ceremony tonight in Rockefeller Center, where there's going to be so many people people concentrated in Midtown because they're very concerned about it. And I wonder what you think, um, Basil, about the fact that this is where we find ourselves in this country, just on, on tender hooks and with race relations so tense that it feels like it's another time, honestly. It does. And I think it's, a, it's the same old story, in fact. It's the lack of faith that government institutions or institutions regulated by government are going to serve the needs of communities of color uh, fairly and effectively. In fact, the frustration that you've seen in Ferguson, you see here in New York, I doubt you'll see the same type of protest, mm -hmm. but, I, but you'll see some. Um, that sentiment is shared across the country by communities of color. It's a frustration that there's lack of access uh, to the system that will actually get us the, the same kind of parity uh, with other communities in this country. You agree, Janine? Well, I think really it's this stems with the New York situation and with Ferguson. It's a lack of opportunities. And really it starts with education, Martha. I'm a former board member with a charter school in Harlem. And I've seen how children have been transformed from going from failing Absolutely. schools mm -hmm. to schools of opportunity and hope and having a successful future. I mean, look at our panel. Adjunct professor, uh, he's working on his PhD. I went to college at night for 11 years because I had to work full time, but I'm the first college graduate in my family. It is about opportunities and people having access to. Mm -hmm. To those opportunities. Yeah, yeah th there's obviously a lot of voices that are getting a lot of attention right now. Charles Barkley on one end, yeah. Louis Farrakhan on the other, in terms of how to deal better with these situations. Let's play those. I want to get your reaction to them. Good. We can't pick out certain incidents that don't go our way and act like the cops are all bad. Do you know how bad some of these neighborhoods would be if it wasn't for the cops? And we die and they die. Then soon we're going to sit at a table and talk about retired. We want some of this earth. Because we'll tear this goddamn country up. It's disturbing. Oh, uh, yeah. That was November 22nd, uh, by the way, from Farrakhan. I mean, he's packing that church. Well, there is a, we were talking about this earlier, I mean, there's a tremendous frustration that things just will not change. But going to Deneen's earlier point, I think schools really can make the difference. I split with my party and my support for charter schools as well. Um, and if you look at what's happening in a lot of low performing schools and a lot of com uh, communities of color, there was a Brown University study today that talks a bit about this, that you have these low performing schools that are not making kids college and career ready. There's a school to prison pipeline, a high rate of suspension among communities of color in these schools so they're putting them in the, the criminal justice system early and a high rate of teacher turnover so when you're dealing with all of this you, you're looking at a complete and utter frustration and essentially the sense that I can't go any further if you listen to Michael Brown's mother's comments the day her son was shot she talked about this she said I worked so hard to send my my, my son tragic. to high school I, and I to mean, get him it, to graduate. It, 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 that, that is a tragedy but I wonder where you know where are the the leaders on, on all sides in this situation. You know, where, and, and Bill O'Reilly said last night he thinks that the president should stay out of this. I think the president is uniquely positioned to demand that people take responsibility, to listen to the things that Charles Barkley is saying, I would recommend, and not necessarily the things that Louis Farrakhan is saying, uh, which have, 
you know, I think been very detrimental, obviously. To but the I, I think o President Obama is playing in both ways, unfortunately, because when he went before the Congressional Black Caucus dinner not too long ago, he mentioned how young black men are victims. And then he, he talks uh, a couple of days ago on how individuals should not uh, cause unrest and be destructive. So I think he's playing it both ways based on the audience that he's in front of, which I find very unfortunate and very disturbing. But it's from the president on down to the likes of Al Sharpton, who were whipping up individuals, not just in Ferguson, but across the country. Do you country. want to see Al Sharpton in that room at the White House, Basil? Does that he's make sense to you? Well, I, I, don't, I don't mind that he's in that room, because the reality is that on, on the issue of police brutality, there's nobody else sort of around the but country that But isn't that, that in that. and of itself very sad to you? It, it's not sad in the sense that, that I, because I know that there are so many groups on the ground that deal with this every single day, and what I think is that if we, there's a lot of talk about Sharpton and Jackson, but go on the ground. There are so many groups that are dealing with this day in and day out. But who's but don't standing have the up and saying what Charles Barkley is saying to these to these kids in these in these neighborhoods? You, you know what? Right. These policemen are here to help you. Are there bad cops? Yes. Right always have been individuals but you need to understand that the police are here to help you why not put the police in that room at the White House you and say be, talk to I, each other you know sit on both and sides and of this and table and, and, and talk to each other message that Obama no that was not the message but I, but, I think, unfortunate. but I do think that that happens and the fact that you have a lot of police officers now who are black African American and Latino shows that they're going into the department knowing that they need to transform the culture and look if something happens to me the first person I'm going to call is a police officer I just want that police officer to treat me with fairness and respect but with this and I think situation no one has said that Michael Brown was at fault. It, Obama's making this look like it's all the police, from the Cambridge police uh, acting stupidly to this point. Yeah, I don't know if he's exactly saying that. What I think he is saying is that we, we as African Americans, do feel a sense of a dis, dis, disparate impact. And he's he sometimes, and I think liberals and, and conservatives um, uh, have problems with what he said. There are some liberals that think he hasn't gone far enough. There are conservatives that say he should stay out of local matters. But do you uh, agree? I mean, if my Michael Brown had not stolen those cigarellos, if he had not put his, paid for you know, gone into that police car, he would not be in the situation that he was in. What I do, I don't know what happened in those two minutes. I'm just going by well, what the grand jury said. What, 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 I, what I know so. in that in those two minutes, Michael Brown could have been conciliatory and he could have been contrite, and we will never know but that. It, but, but what doesn't help is the hands up, don't shoot, but which we are seeing from individuals in leadership positions. That does not help the situation because it, based on the evidence, that is not what happened. I think it does because it calls attention to the it, issue. I don't and, think so. And it calls attention to the issue and it says. I think there are better ways. I don't do want, that. I want the police to help me and help my community, but I also want them you to treat me You got to say that then. All right, Basil, thank you very much. Janine, always good to see you both. Thank, thank you. Thank you.